Jacob is with us in Sacramento. Hi, Jacob. How are you? I'm better than I deserve, Dave. How about you? Just the same, sir. How can I help? Um, so I've got a question about um, when to sell a car. So um, I drive a 2005 Honda. It's got like 181,000 miles on it. Um, and I'm planning to drive it into the ground, but I guess my question is, when do you know it's financially a good idea to get out of that vehicle and not continue putting repairs into it? You know, the weird thing is that you can hardly ever justify selling a car based on repairs financially. Let me give you an example, okay? If you say, okay, the car, drive the car all the way down to it's a $2,000 car. It's not yet, but someday, okay? Mm-hmm. You, you know, 300,000 miles on it, you've worn the wheels off of it, and and you have a $500 or even a $1,000 repair, right? Yeah. And, and you say, well, you know, these repairs are killing me. I'm going to go buy a, a a nice another little Honda for 12000 bucks." Well, the first year, that car is going to go down more than the cost of that repair on the old one. You oh, follow yeah. me? So almost yeah. never can you justify mathematically buying a better car based on the math you know, okay. this, or based on the gas mileage even. Very few people drive long, enough miles to justify the difference on gas mileage, especially as cheap as gas is now. So the whole Prius thing is a freaking joke, you know, in terms of mm-hmm. figuring out a way to buy a $30,000 car versus a $20,000 car and make up that $10,000 with gas mileage. You'd have to drive the freaking thing to the moon mathematically. Okay, so you can't do it based on the math. So what it comes down to is if you're going to buy a Prius, you're doing that because you're worried about the planet um, or whatever you're doing. I mean, on the, 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 you know, the, uh, the, the environmental issues, right? Now, in your case, what we're saying is it comes down to hassle factor, and the purchase of the newer vehicle is a small enough percentage of your world that the hassle factor is worth more than whatever that is, you know, and so let's say you're making, you know, you're making a hundred and a half and you go buy a $20,000 car, you pay cash for it and you move up out of this car that you've driven down to 3000 bucks in value. And you really don't get anything except reliability for that and a lowered repair bill. But I mean, the difference in 17,000 bucks, you'll never get that back in repairs. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's just you got yeah. a little nicer car. It's a creature comfort, and you don't have you know you're not sitting on the side of the interstate with your cell phone in your hand trying to figure out how to get off the you know off the side of the sh- shoulder here. So because it, it's a pain in the butt to break down, right? So at some point, it's just hassle factor and comfort as a percentage of your net worth and your income. It's a non-issue, so you move up in car, and that's a reasonable thing. But you really can't mathematically justify the expense. Because you'd never repair it. I mean, you could rebuild the whole freaking little car, you know, and, and still would be less in it than, than than you paid to move up. Okay, that makes sense. So, I, yeah, but it's still, I still would tell you to move up at some point and not, and not bark at you about it. And you know my rule on cars is all of your things with motors in them added together should be less than half your annual income. And mm-hmm. you pay cash for them. Okay, yeah, I can do that. The, the plan is eventually when... when uh, the element dies to go and get a, a Subaru Impreza that's used in, you know, yeah. in our cash flow scenario. Yeah, and you pay cash for it. And you, yeah. but, you're, but again, you're moving from the element, which might be worth three or 4000 bucks at the time, and you move up from that into maybe a $15,000 Subaru, right? Yeah, yeah. That that's what three years old or something at that time and low miles or something. And, that, and, and yeah, do that. And we tell people not to buy a brand new car. For these exact same reasons, unless you have a net worth of at least a million dollars. Now, once you've got a million dollar net worth, the loss in value on a brand new car is a small enough percentage of your world. It's not ruining your life. But when you got no money and you make 50 grand and you're driving a $30,000 car, that's stupid zone. Yeah. You're not there. But I mean, for our listeners sake, you know that we tell people that because you're, you're just losing your butt every day. Every time you start the car, you lost another thousand bucks. You know, it's just crazy. And then you scratch your head and wonder why your kid's college fund isn't funded. And that's what we tell people not to do. So you're on track here. But I also want to give uh, people permission to, you know, drive it down till the wheels fall off. That's fine. But go ahead and move up when you've got the cash and when you got yourself in good financial condition. You're out of debt. you got the emergency fund in place. you got a car. you got some car money above that. 
and then get you a decent vehicle. I don't mind you doing that at all. I was trying to encourage a young friend of mine who's got a net worth of about a million dollars this weekend. Go ahead and, you know, she was not wanting to buy a new car. And I said, you know, you're in good shape. You're just being a tightwad. You know, go get the di- the difference in the new one and the other one. I would get a new one. And I, I have bought new cars, but only in the last few years as I've gotten my net worth up there. Okay. Hey, man, thanks for the call. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest content and check out these other great clips from the show.